Shalom, everyone. Shalom. I want to welcome everyone to the House of the Lost Sheep of Israel. I'm Elder Michael Johnson. I'm the pastor over here that will be going through the, the lesson today, and it's going to be a very good day. And um, I really want people really to understand one thing. And I'm more getting in my comfort zone because my comfort zone is where I really love to do parables, in which that's where I can move continually forward. And why I was asking people to when you want to see what we're doing, you might have to go back and look at some videos that we that I have done before. Because from here out, I will be moving just straight towards parables and I will be giving you the silhouette and the similitudes of them to where you can get a better understanding of the Bible. And I just want to let everybody know as we going through it, we're going to be doing a the the accepting people for the Bible study that I'll be having probably once a month. We're going to be doing that today. As soon as we finish here, we're going to go into the back. You'll see the description below. And we're going to be going in the Zoom area. But I do want to make sure people know a couple of things. See, because many people say, I'm so glad I found the channel. So glad I understand that completely when people say that. But I want to make sure each and every one don't ever, ever think that you found me. Don't ever think you found me. That's just like saying a fish found the fisher. <laughs> Literally what it's saying. 
And I want to make sure you clearly understand. I am a fisher of men. I'm a fisher of men. So you was just swimming around in the sea and you seen some of the bait that I had up on my fishing line. And you have taken the bait and you're here. So I want to make sure everybody understand that's the main thing. And, and what we really want to look at when you catch fish and you catch sometimes you catch fish, uh, you know, it'd be 10 inches long, some be seven inches long, some be 12 inches long, some be 20 and 30 on up. But I want to make sure you understand something with those with those inches is we talking about in years. So if you catching some people in the 20 in the 30 and the 40 and the 50 range, you're catching some pretty good sized fish, but you're not catching the big fish that is in the sea. And I just want to let you know, I want to welcome my, my brother. His name, his name is, is Harvey Simmons. Yeah. I, I want to let you know, he, he didn't, he didn't swim around cause he swam around with his, with his, with his children and, and he didn't bit on this bait. And I got him over here. And he, he, he's a little bit older than me. He's in his 70s. But I tell you what, he didn't got up on this hook. Yet. I got him. Because I'm going to reel in. I'm a pretty good fisher. And I'm a pretty good angler. And once you get up on this bait, I don't, I don't too much let you off. So I want to thank him for coming over here and seeing what we have to say. With thus said the Lord, because all I can do is lead you to this water. That's all I can do. And we let God take over the rest. Because just look at me as his hype man. I'm going to tell you what time it is. So I tell everybody, look at me as Flavor Flav. And I want to thank him for coming over here. But once he hear what he got to say, and I want to make sure as we go through these teachings, as he look at this, always test everything. Don't believe anything that is coming out of my mouth and I don't have nothing to back it up. That's what jacked up so many people. That's why you have 45,000 plus different denominations of Christian religion based on that alone. And that's why here we run precepts. So we got, a, we got a quite a few anglers over here. We got a quite a few fishermen and everybody sometimes use different types of bait to where we get our fish. So I want to thank him and I want to thank everybody for coming over here. But I want to make sure that as you went through here, and we, we picked it up last time from, from the parable of Leah and Rachel. We're going to find out how complex the Bible actually is, but I'm going to try to unravel much of it as possible for you as we continually move forward. Because it's going to be very, very interesting. And as it be very interesting, we got to look at things and where most people mess up at. They look at everything literal in you talking to a spirit God. <laughs> That's the craziest thing in the world. So he has to show us similitude in the flesh to get us to understand what he's talking about in the spirit. But most people, they look at it in a different way. So we're looking at this and what we're doing, we're looking at part two. And it's going to get pretty good and it's going to make sure as we send our, our moderators, they tell them you have your pencils and papers ready. You make sure you have them ready. But also for my seniors, we, we setting it up and Deacon Mikey, he called me last night. We was talking with um, um uh, Sister Bernadette and them and they doing a whole lot of things over there back there in the, in the SharePoint area, to especially to help out our seniors. And I just got to let them know we got to, we didn't, we had a new one because we have to build a room for brother Harvey. <laughs> we got to build him a room and he got a, And he got a wife and we got to make sure it's enough for both of them to fit. So with that, we looking at Rachel and Leah, we looking at a parable and we had to understand it. So last week we was going through the grocery store. We got to look at, it, we had to get a whole lot of different tools to where we needed to understand the foundation on what was happening here. But now it's going to start getting really, really good, but I want to make sure so no one get lost. We want to make sure that each and every person have a pencil and paper ready to where you can take down notes. That's what we do here. That's what we do here to make sure you understand it. 
And I want to make sure that each and every one of us gets this. So as we're getting ready to get started, we, we're looking at L Rachel and Leah and these sisters, and they, and they was married to this man named Jacob. We know that. And as we look at this, this same guy <clears throat> who, who, who married also Rachel, this man was searching for a bride, and that's what he was originally set out to do. He had to go out and find him a bride, and, and his father gave him instructions on what to do. He told him right up front. He said, don't take none of the daughters of, of, of Canaan, which he lived around them. But he told him to travel to pan down the ram. We're going to find out what that means in a little while. <clears throat> so we're going to break that down in a little while. But he told him to go there and to get a wife from Bethuel. We're going to find out what all that is. We're going to pull that up in a, in a little while also. So we know from the family of Bethuel was talking about was his mother's father and Laban was his mother's brother. So we're going to find out what those are because as we go down, once we start finding out the functioning behind that and what, it, what it's talking about, we're going to get a better understanding. And it's going to show us spiritually what he was talking about the entire time on what he wanted us to actually see. So as this result, he can had to elevate himself. And what happened, his father elevated him to the role of a merchant man. We're going to find out what that is also. So don't worry about the words I'm using because we're going to find out later what all this stuff means. Because we got to find out this parable. <coughs> Excuse me. So as we find out what this parable is, then we're going to start unraveling this and we're going to really find out what was being said to us the entire time that was right directly in front of us and we didn't get it. <laughs> but we're going to get it. We're going to get it today. We're going to get this today. And you got to see when he called his merchant man, then he, the merchant man, he was going to deliver some goods and services of the most high God into where he can become a multitude, a multitude of people. So today we're going to go deeper into the, the parables of this plot of land. So make sure that each and every one of us understand what we got to do. We're getting ready to go in some deep water, so you make sure. And, and the deep water we're going in, you can't take no breathing apparatus with you. Because <laughs> we're going to be down there for a minute. We're going to be down there for a good minute. And we want to understand it, but I want to make sure you get the parable. So this one merchant man, and he was looking at two plots of land. That's what was going on. And we're going to look at this because we're going to see where some jealousy going to kick in, hatred going to kick in, mercy and hidden within the text. But we must understand the complexity of the event to truly understand the purpose of his journey that we are on and that we're on. That's what we're going to find out. So last week we studied the foundation of this parable to where we can actually start tearing it down. And as we do this, we want to understand why this merchant man, this merchant man, we know, now we know his name was Jacob. We're going to find out why, why, why. The main point of this, this merchant man took two sisters. We need to know why. And we're going to find that out why in one second. And we're going to start going down through it. So make sure you have your paper and pen pencils ready. And we're going to go through it. And we're going to pick this up first. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to begin right there at verse 44. We want to find this out right there. This is a good part where we're going to start unraveling what's going on. And it says again. See, again, so it happened already before. But he's saying again, he want to explain something which he's going to compare it to. He says, again, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is like, is like, is a resemblance. It's like a treasure hid in the field. You see the semicolon, so he, that's a full thought right there, and he's done with that part. But he says more, he says, which a man hath found and he hid it. And for joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. We're going to unpack all that. We're going to unpack it, and it's going to be a joyful thing, what we're going to be doing. 
So we want to understand the, the same thing he said he liked. Then this is the resemblance. So we understand this comparison of this merchant man went out searching for some treasure and he found this hidden field. The kingdom of heaven was right before you. And this is right before us. And this treasure is talking about a jewel. It's a jewel. Because that's all treasure means. It's a jewel. In the field, we got to see spiritually, it's talking about teachings, but foundationally, it's talking about hidden in the ground because it was spoken in parables. That's why it's hidden in the ground. That's the purpose of it. It's hidden in the ground. So since it's hidden in the ground, it's spoken in parables. Let's 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 pull some information and help us out all together on this. We're gonna look at uh Matthew chapter 13. We're gonna pick it up at verse 12 to understand how that actually works. It says and whosoever have to have, to him shall be given. To him shall be given. Including he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not from him shall be taken away. Even that he hath. Telling you this. If you already have some, he's going to give you more. He's going to give you more understanding. But now we have people who have not. So they'll get something even here. But then it's still going to be taken away. This is what he's telling. This is what he's telling. But he's going to explain why he has to do it that way. He has to do it that way. Because many people, they like to come through here. They're going to come through here and they'll get teachings and everything like that. And they feel they they have something, but they're getting it for all the wrong reasons. So even though they have it, it's going to be still taken away. It's still going to confuse you later. It's still going to drive you up the wall in another way. And he's telling you right here in verse 13 where who's going to make this clear for each and every one. It says, for that reason, therefore, speak I to them in parables. So that's why he's speaking in parables. That's why we have to break these parables down to understand what he was talking about. So he's telling us parable with these similitudes to which we got to understand it. He says, whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make understand doctrine? Who shall he make understand what he's telling you? He says, them that is weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And that's why we understand that. And he's telling you, I'm going to give you pastors according to my heart that will feed you with this. They're going to feed you with this knowledge. They're going to feed you with this understanding. And it's telling you here, he says, so therefore I speak in parables because they're going to unravel it for you. He says, because they, people seeing, see not. So even though you see what's going on, you're still not going to see not. You're still not going to get it. He says, in hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. This is why when most people see and they hear me talking, everything goes out. This is why we find out they don't get nothing I say. They, 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 this dude talking foreign language. Because we have to understand the parables is presented of the kingdom and the more to it, the more abundance you're going to have. But we have people who will sit there and they will use the, the methods of, of hermeneutics. They're going to use the methods of exegesis, which is their principles of interpreting, interpreting the Bible. But they're going to do it incorrectly because the Bible has nothing to do with hermeneutics or exegesis. Neither one. The Bible is strict, is strictly strict on on precepts. And we know that because it's telling you right here in Psalm in Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 10. This is strictly how it's done, but people are going to do it incorrectly. It says, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. This is why you see me, why I got to go to different parts of the Bible. I might get a little bit from here. I'm going to go get a little bit from over there. I'm going to go get a little bit from over here. I'm going to go get a little bit from over there. Because he having you do that, and we have to do that because we're going to be forever studying until we return back to the ground. That's, that's a bottom line deal. But he has put pieces in each one of his 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 seeds and each one of his prophets to where they'll put a little bit on here and he's going to put a little bit over there. But then you can put them all together just like you're doing a puzzle. You can get it. And he tells us this in Psalms 119 and verse 4. Actually, I got it wrong. Whoa, we got to go to 119, verse 4. <clears throat> As he says right here. 
Thou hast commanded us to keep that precept diligently. We have to keep them. So anyone teaching you any other kind of way, he's going to tell you a bold faced lie. I don't care who he is. Be your, be your uncle, your husband, <laughs> your daddy. If he ain't showing you according to precepts, because precepts removes the man 100%. This is why this, why this parable that we're going to get into, people don't get it. People didn't see it. Because they proceed, they want to tell you, read this, and they read two verses down, shut the book up, and then they tell you a story. Story's good. They start hooping and hollering. You go in your pocket, give them some money, you go on your way. You are nothing but a whore. <laughs> That's all you were. Well, just a bold faced, low down whore. You're paying for it. That's why you open his legs for anyone that passes by, and you're just paying for it. So you were just a whore to get that, get that little feel good message. And he commanded us to keep precepts. It tells you right there in the Bible. It tells you right up front in the Bible what you're supposed to do, but tell you even more so what, how, you, how you're going to help us out. Let's go down here a little bit. We're going to go down and we're going to pick every, everything because we're going to understand the parable as a whole on what's going on. And let's look at this in, in um, Psalms. We're going to go right back to 119. But we're going to look at 104. 104 and it tells it says through that precepts i get understanding so this is how we're going to get the understanding therefore for that reason i hate every false way then you hate all the false ways and and i challenge anyone who's been sitting over here six months i tell you right now you can go walk in your the church that you used to attend right now and that you have been over here six months. Go back in that church in there. I guarantee you, you can't sit in there, sit in there for 10 minutes while that man talking. You're going to catch him lying. Every, every, everything he's going to say, he's going to tell you a lie. He's going to tell you a bold-faced, unadulterated lie. But we have to sit there. We have to understand the precepts of God. And people have a problem because when you come over here, this is what we do. We run precepts. And you hate every false way. And it tells you more so, which we're going to also look in, in Isaiah 34. Same thing as same thing 34. We just picking up keys as, as we continually move forward. 34 and verse 16. And it tells us this exactly what we need to be doing. Exactly what we need to be doing. Seek ye out of the book. Singular. Singular. Seek ye out of the book. Singular. It's not plural, singular. You seek ye out of that one book, the Lord, and read. You read that one. But you see right here, it goes from singular to plural because within that one book are many books. No one of these should fail and none should want to make. You don't try to make something else to how they didn't did it. They didn't try to make the the, this book of Jubilee, they didn't, uh, the book of Enoch, the book of the book of Jasher. They didn't put all these crazy things together and to fool you from the truth. And then they want to sit there talking about King James Bible. He 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 didn't have all the he didn't have all the books. But then you gonna tell me some little broke low down person gonna get better stuff than what a king who was over two providences had access to. But now you got better access. <laughs> you just walking around like boo boo. You walking around like boo boo. Oh no, we got better text than what he had. Really, this man controlled two providences, and now you gonna sit there and tell me you got something better than he got? You you got privy, and he can tell you he can tell people to move, they move. He can tell them to run, they run. He can tell them to jump, they ask how high. Yeah, you go tell your you go tell your wife, your brother, your sister, your friend. You go tell them that and see what you get. You see what you get. But he said, no one of these should fail. And, and he says, for my mouth, who Christ has commanded in his spirit, has he gathered them. And then we got people, fools, telling you, go, go use this book. Go use that book. Go use this book. Go use that book. And this is where the problem becomes. This is why we got to look at this all together as we getting ready to get into it because all scripture, all scripture. And as he's telling us right there, we see it. 
And you see when people tell you certain things, you want to understand what it's for because he's telling you his spirit gathered them. As he says in second, second Timothy chapter three, but we're going to look at verse 16 because it's telling us all scripture that was contained in this book. All scripture is given by the inspiration, the breath, because that's all inspiration means by the breath by God. So it's telling you all scripture is given by the breath of God. And we got people telling you contrary, but this lets you know who people are. This lets you know who they are, but it's telling you right there. And it says, including is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions of righteousness. I'm telling you right up front. So we know it's profitable. It's profitable because it's prosperity. It's doctrine because of the instructions and it's reproof for the correction and the reboot. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. It ain't to sit there to try to put somebody else on a pedestal. This is why we so screwed up today on that alone. We so screwed up on the parable. We can't get a parable cause we, we too worried about boo-boo. We too worried about boo-boo. So we got to look at this. <laughs> we got to look at this and we got to understand something. So I want to show you something where this merchant man, Jacob, and he found his treasure. So he had to sell all that he had. So he released everything that he owned according to the flesh. And then he went into where he had to buy up this field. Cause it's telling you all right here, he bought up this field. So when he bought up this field, he served something for seven years and then he served again for another seven. So he was doing this thing to completion, which was the entire field. But to find out how this actually works, I'm going to show you something where we're going to get some things together to where we can understand the parable. So we want to look at somebody. We want to look at somebody and, and get a better understanding. So we're going to go over here to Ruth. We're going to go to Ruth. The reason I want to go to Ruth because it's going to help bring us in, bring us a little bit closer. Ruth chapter five, chapter four, I'm sorry, chapter four, but we want to look personally at verse five. The reason why, because it's going to help us out in a lot of stuff. So make sure you jot that down and we're going to, we're going to start working our way through it. It says, then said Boaz in the understand, put all the players in the, in the middle of the floor. So we want to know what all the players are. So we know Boaz is, is spiritually, Remove Boaz and understand Boaz is functionally creator is strength. So we're looking at the strength of the creator. That's what we're doing. So remove Boaz. Cause if not, I promise you, you're not going to get this parable. You have to follow it based on a parable because he's using these people. He's using things. He's using bodies. He's using them as similitudes to where we can understand it and translate it spiritually on what he's trying to tell us. So he's showing us a physical representation of things and people to where we can get the parable. Everybody with me? We want to make sure we understand that. And then we have the other one. We have Naomi. Naomi is my delight. Don't look at Naomi as Naomi because if you look at it according to the flesh, you might, you boo-boo. <laughs> That's the best thing for me to tell you. Then you just boo-boo. Don't sit there and tell me where well, I don't get it and you're not doing as I'm asking you to do to find out what it's saying spiritually. So he's using these things and telling you what the representation of it is. Naomi is, is telling you is his delight. So you have to buy this field. So watch what he says here. It says, then said Boaz, what day thou buyeth the field of the land of the hand of Naomi or the power of Naomi? Thou must, you commanded to buy also Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the, the way of the dead upon his inheritance. He's telling us right up front what we got to do. He's telling us right up front, this is what you have to do because he had to buy up this land and Ruth is talking about a companion and a friend. Ruth. In the companion and the friend, I'm going to let you know ahead of time, put this Ruth and tie her to the same one tired of Leah. You write that down. Write it down. Tie her to Leah. Just, just keep the, just, you have to stay with me when we rolling through here. Cause 
I'm going to try to make sure I stay slowed down the way I don't speed up. Well, we get it. People say, we, well, sometimes Elder John, you speak fast. Okay, let me, let me slow down. Let me slow down. Sometimes I get excited and I just, I just start talking like we both know exactly what we're talking about. So, and people sitting there, man, I don't know what the hell you're saying. Okay, I get it. But we know we got to look at also the Moabitess, so we got to look at Moab. And I want to let you know why Moab is so important there, because Moab is talking about the Dead Sea. That's all Moab mean, Dead Sea. Are you with me? Are you with me? So we're looking at these things and we want to understand it. So put those in there, put them in your notes and make sure we're going to roll together. Cause, Cause we getting ready to go. So right now we only about in about four feet of water, but we're going to go out some more. We're going to go out deeper. We're going to go out deeper because I'm going to show you something to where we can look at it all together. It's a quote that's actually stated in uh, Hebrews. And we'll see this in Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13, and we'll look at verse 20. We're looking at a quote. It's right here. Now the God of peace have brought again. He brought again. Wait a minute. The God of peace that brought again. You catching that? Again. From the dead, our creator of salvation it's telling us right there, the creator of salvation, because that's all Lord is. It's creator in Jesus or Yahweh is just talking about salvation. So the creator of salvation, that great shepherd of the sheep, though the blood, the life of the everlasting covenant. He's literally nailing us to the cross, but we're going we're gonna to unpack a lot of different stuff. So what we got to do, we got to remember he had to bring this again from the dead, this creator of salvation, this great shepherd through the life of the covenant. So we got to remember Naomi, my delight, come again. So Naomi, she come again. You got to keep that in mind because if not, you're going to lose what's going on. So she came again. Are you with me? Let's look at this. Let's, let's make sure we all on, we're all on board. Let's look at this and make sure we're all on board. We're looking at um, Ruth chapter 4, verse 3. And it says, including, he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, my delight that is come again out of the country of the Dead Sea. Y'all go, y'all know, y'all, y'all probably missing, y'all probably missing about what, what's going on. But he's telling you exactly what's going on. He's showing you exactly what's happening. He come again up out of the Dead Sea. Can these bones live? Well, that's okay. We'll, we'll deal with that later. We'll deal with it later. But he's telling us right up front what's going on. Y'all remember Ezekiel, right? No, that's okay. That's all right. He said, sell a parcel of land which was our brother Elimelech. Right up here. It's right up here. And it was the reason Christ even came. <laughs> I want you to get this part over here. And we doing all this work. And, and believe me, I don't mind putting in work for us to get it. I work for him, so I'm good. I'm paid. I'm paid by him. And I want you to make sure. So you have to sit there. You have to come again and get this parcel of land that was our brother Elimelech, but he's telling us the same thing what we're going to see again. I'll show you again to where we're going to see it. I'm going to show you these silhouette pictures to where we can get it. Very, very good thing. Now, it's telling us right here in Romans chapter 9, verse 3. It says, I wish I, that I can were cursed. I was separated from, my, from, from Christ, from my brother and from my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Why? Because it's talking about this over here in Ruth talking about this over here in Matthew, but he's going to tell you why. We Israelites. To whom pertaineth the adoption, including the glory and including the covenants and including the giving of the law and the service of God and in the promises. It's right up here and right up front. So we, we, we kind of got everything that's going on. And 
it will not have to redeem the land and he has to redeem the land. He has to redeem the land. You have to redeem it according to the dead, to the, how our fathers were, how Abraham was, how Jacob was, how Isaac was. You, you follow me. This, this is what you have to do. That's why he said, you have to buy this land. You have to, you have to, you have to dead upon his inheritance. You have to, you have to do the same thing. So with Ruth, <clears throat> so with Ruth also, my friend, my comforter, keep, see, remove the name and look at the function. Cause it's going to help you out. It's, it's going it's to unconfuse a lot of stuff for you. So Ruth, he want to be Ruth, and he's telling you right there, the wife of the dead. So wife don't mean nothing but a bearer of fruit. So keep that in mind. He's telling us up front what's going on, but we got to watch the parable because we're going, you're going, you'll miss it. I'm telling you, you'll miss it. It'll go right past you. And what we are doing, we're looking at this. So Ruth, the wife, the bearer of fruit of the dead, which is the corp of the waste. And then another kinsman marry her and raise up the name, raise up the way of the dead kinsmen, according to the flesh who pertains to the adoption, which includes the glory and the covenants and giving of the law and the service of God, which includes the promises. <laughs> it's telling us over here. It's telling us that over here. Why you think he, why you think boy is saying this here? Why you think Boaz saying it here and Paul's repeating it? I told you, Paul, Paul, will Paul tell you in Romans 7, 1, he said, stay out of his book. If you don't know the law, stay out of his book. Technically telling you that. Telling you that. So we have to look at this as the kinsmen according to the flesh, which God of Israel is not the, is not the God even of all these wives of flesh but we cannot change the structure of the similitude for our learning. We have to look at this all together, understand it and pull through it. So let's look at something. Well, I want to show you something here. We're going to, we're going to go over here to first Corinthians. Look at first Corinthians chapter seven. Why? We got to figure out something. We need a couple of other keys. Need a couple of other keys to get through this. In First Corinthians chapter seven, and we look at verse twenty-seven. Art thou bound? Art thou bound? Art a r t, and it's talking about God's beauty. That's all it's telling you. God's beauty thou bound unto a wife. You see how he said, bound your yoke, but fasten. That's what it's saying. But when most people still look at art, oh, that's just saying art. No, it's not. <laughs> that's our problem. That's our biggest problem. Our biggest problem we have, we go look at stuff. We go, oh, well, this means this and this means this. You go get a Strong's Concordance, boo-boo. Boo, you go get a boo-boo concordance. He's going to get you. But he's telling us right there. God's beauty thou bound unto a wife. But he's asking you that. He's asking you the question. He's asking you a question. Are you? God's beauty, thou art born unto the wife. Yo, are you? It says, seek not to be loose. <laughs> seek not to be loose. But a lot of us like to go and whore around. Whore around. And mainly saying this, you got guys, you got women. Yeah, sit there and be bound to a husband, be bound to a wife. And the first thing they want to do now they want to go window shopping for other things. Oh, let me see there. Let me see this one. Let me see how this one is. Let me see how that one is. Let me see how that one is. You got these boo-boo dudes. They going, okay, let me do this. Let me do, do, do that. And the worst thing is you put, you put, you put, you put one of us and put, put some money in his pocket. That's why you got a lot of athletes. They sit right there and then they go from city to city. And if someone got from city to city, a girlfriend in each, in each city. Boo-boos. Boo-boos. That's stupidity. Then why did you get married? You're just a fool. And this is any any one of them. 
I don't care who they are. If they sitting there and they married and they got, uh, they got a girlfriend in this town, got a girlfriend in that town, got a girlfriend in this town, they're a fool. Just because you got money and you doing it, they, they, boy, you seek not to be loose. And it says, God's beauty thou loose from a wife. Seek not a wife. Don't, don't do it. Then don't do it. He's telling us right here, right up front. Right up front. Actually, you want to tell you what? Let's run me somewhere. Let's, let's, let's check out something. Let's run me somewhere and I'll come back over. And let's look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. Matthew 5, 32, and get some information. However, Matthew 5, 32, however, but I say unto you, that whatsoever shall put away his wife, saving, meaning only, saving, saying only for the cause of fornication, to be a whore. Just to be a whore. Causes her to commit adultery, including whosoever shall marry her, that is divorce committed for adultery. Boo boo. Boo boo. So many of us seek to put away a wife. So he's saying the same thing with Christ. Why are you going to put a Christ away? Why? Because you want to go whore around another God. <laughs> we're going to get this over here. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 40, we're going to get that. But we're trying to understand why, because a lot of us goes out. If you for fornicating, people, I don't know what fornicating is. How you don't know what fornicating is? So he shows you a physical similitude. Go, all you do is go look at a whore. Well, you know what a whore is, don't you? Go look at a girl who sleeps with many men. Go look at a man where men sitting there talking about, oh, I'm going to go sow my royal oats. He ain't nothing but a low-down, ignorant dog. And it tells you that in back of the way, people, you shouldn't call him dog. Okay, he calls him that, and I work for him. I'm just repeating what he's saying. And the last time I checked, <laughs> I don't see you in the book telling us in reprimanding God. But the Bible says, don't do it for fornication. Then don't get married. Committing fornication, you commit the Deutsch. And I'm going to tell you, the reason why it gets this way. The reason why it gets this way. Let's let's look at this and, and, and go through it. In Romans chapter seven, we we'll had look at verse two. And he tells us. It says, For the woman which has a husband is bound by the law of her husband so long as he liveth. Comparing he liveth. So now we're looking at this and talking about a physical representation of this woman but he's telling us if you have one you t you bound to him as long as he's living and according to his laws but if the husband be dead she's loose from the law of her husband he has to be dead then she's loose from it now even though that this one over here which we're going to get all this right over here because it's telling us because Ruth from the sea the, from the dead sea was the wife of the dead. And you had to take her and you had to raise up life according to the forefathers. So hopefully we're getting all this. Hopefully we're getting this. Because if we lose, meaning you separated, you release. Because that's all this is, loose. You separate it or you release because of the beauty that you have done. So in this case with Ruth, her husband was dead. And so she was she was clear. She was clear to marry again. She was clear to marry again. However, getting married again, or getting married, period, 
has nothing to do with um, anything that's ill will about anything. See, cause I'm gonna show you something to where we get this all together. In First Corinthians chapter, uh, uh, chapter seven, we're gonna go down to verse twenty-eight. It says, "But however, including providing thou marry, thou hast not sinned, and you have not sinned. Including if a virgin marry, a pure one marry, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such." shall have trouble in flesh, but I spare you. What is that telling us? What is that telling us? Because now she has to not only care for the things of God, now you have to care for the things of the flesh of your husband or take care of the things of your wife, according to the flesh. Not talking about, oh, you go pick up the trash, you go do, that's not talking about that. But people sit there and try to join that to that, but that's not the truth. Let's, let's pull down a little bit more and get a better understanding here. In verse 32, same place, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it says, However, I would have you without carefulness, without carefulness, he that is unmarried, carry for things that belongeth to the Creator. You see that? How he may please the Creator. Because now, if you're not married, you're only prerogative supposed to be caring for the creator not going out there trying to whore around you with me see i know a lot of people don't like that they say well i'd like to go party no don't whore around you're supposed to care for the things of the creator well i can't go what do that say you're supposed to care for the things of the creator that you may please the creator do the creator want you whoring around do the creator want you to go do this well, I just like to go to the club and get a little bit, you know, buzz. Okay, that's caring for the creator. See, all this thing, all this stuff comes out. All these things comes into play. In fact, um, go down a little bit. And it gets more. It says, however, he that is married, care for the things that uh, are of the world. Meaning you got to care for that husband or you got to care for that wife but they'll sit there oh well I need somebody to cut the grass I need someone to take out the trash I need someone to wash the windows I need them to wash my car yeah she works she got a real good job she need to be taking care of me while I play Nintendo no it's not saying that you care for things of the world that means intimacy and things of that nature that the flesh craves. He, how he may please his wife. And he's going to explain some more. He's going to explain some more. He's going to get it. Because he, he, he's going to keep drilling down. It says there's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. There's a difference between the two. That the unmarried woman care for the things of the creator. That's a virgin. That she may be holy in both in body and spirit. That's a virgin. But the woman, but the but the married care for things of the world, how she may please her husband. Now she's stand to this husband. She's pure in spirit, but she's caring for flesh. She's a wife. She's going to be a bearer of fruit. It's telling you right up front what it is. Right up front what it is. But we have people who are going to sit there and tell you contrary. What everything is going down. So we got to understand how this actually works. Now, we have a woman that is married to a man. And you're seeing what's being required above in caring for things of God. Including the things of the world. That she may please her husband and the same thing vice versa. So this is the deal as we look at Naomi. We're going to look at the deal with Ruth. You got to understand what's going on there. Because I said, for us to get this, we got to unpack that. But people will sit there and you have people who will run you through all types of craziness and you'll never really get it. So that's why I'd like to make sure we get all the keys to make sure we can get what's going on here. And we'll find some of this buried over here in 
Ruth chapter 1, but we're going to pick it up at verse 8. We got to look at that right there. We got to look at that right there. Watch what it says here. It says, in Naomi, my delight, including my delight, said unto her two daughters-in-law. She told them something. Go, return. Each to her mother's house. The Spirit of God deal kindly with you, meaning he didn't he didn't take y'all out. <laughs> he, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't crush you out. So you, you can get on out of here. Because he ain't playing. So you can get you can roll. You can roll out of here. You got a chance to get up out of here. But I'm in this thing forever. Because I already made the deal. <laughs> it says more. It says, and the spirit of God deal kindly with you. Comparing, you see, you see right here, she she see she comparing. See, right there, right there is ass. So comparing as it says, as ye have dealt with the dead, including with me. <laughs> Saying, okay, best for y'all to get getting, because if not, he a whole different ball game. But it gets better. Let's, let's go down a little bit. We're going to find out something. We're going to find out something. We're going to drop down to verse 11. But if you want to see it, just read the whole thing. And, and, but we want to go through it with understanding. And it says in Naomi, my delight said, turn again, my daughters. Turn again, my daughters. It says, why will ye go with me? What in the world are you going to go with me for? You see, he's laying a smack down on me. <laughs> he putting it on me. He took my husband. He took my two sons. He's dealing with me on a whole different level. And if you want to get what I'm getting, you stay over here. You're going to get some of that too if we keep going the wrong way. It says, why go with me? He says, aren't there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Are you guys kidding me? Are you guys kidding me? So within this parable, we have to look at the language of the text. <clears throat> So we want to understand what she's dealing with and who she's dealing with. So we know the first one, one of his name is Oprah. <laughs> it actually fits the one, even the one y'all see on TV. Because Oprah don't mean nothing but double-minded. Exactly what it is. That's what Oprah means. Double-minded. But we have Ruth is talking about a companion and a friend. That's the focus we got to keep in here. And this is why it keep going through here so we want to understand who the players are so remove the names and understand the functions remove the names and understand the parable that is being used so with this language we have one that's double minded the other one is a companion and a friend it's telling us right up front so let's look at this and let's drop down to verse 16 and get a better understanding get a better understanding here now now we see this is she going to be forsaken that's how you have to look at this and it says including the companion and a friend that's who ruth is. that's what ruth is. see don't look at ruth as ruth that's our problem we keep looking at ruth as oh well ruth well ruth, you know say ruth right here that's what it says and no 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 stop it ruth companion and friend said entreat me not to leave thee or return from following after thee I'm your friend and your companion for whether thou goest I will go whether thou goest I will go whether thou lodgest I will lodge I'm your friend I'm your companion I'm not double minded like, like Oprah I'm <laughs> not like her it says, thy people shall be my people. Including thy God, my God. See, she's doing this vow and she's going to get caught up in the same thing, good or bad. She, she, this is what she's taking on, but it gets better. It gets better. It says, where thy dieth, 
I will die. So where you end up falling out and die, I'm going to die there too. Including there will be, there will I be buried. So wherever you bury, I'm buried. She's letting you know. The Spirit of God, see, this lets you know when you got a friend who's going to ride or die. This telling you right up front. Watch what she says. Because she knows who she's saying now. She said, the Spirit of God do so to me, including more also. You tell me, you tell me that ain't a friend. That's a friend. It says, if all, but death part thee and me. Only death gonna part it. But he, he, whatever he doing to you, do to me. <laughs> whatever goes on there, do to me. You tell me. How many people is willing to do that? How many people is willing to do that? But let's go back over here and take a closer look at the parable. We got to look at the parable to understand this here. Because it's telling you what that feel is. It's letting us know what's going on. When we look at this, we're going to find out something. We're going to highlight this 45 and 46 in Matthew chapter 13. And it's telling us something that's really interesting. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man. We see that. A trafficker of goods and services. It's all the same. Put Jacob there. It says, seeing goodly pearls. You see how he's putting this? Pearls is nothing but precious jewels. It's telling us exactly what's going on. And it's telling you something right there. It says, who he had found one pearl of great price. So he found one pearl in, in, in for a great price, which had a wage and a debt on it. Went and saw all that he had and, and, and he brought it. That was right there. Let's, 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 let's unpack some of this. Let's unpack this. We got to go back and see what, what went on. In Genesis chapter 28, picking it up in verse 1. We see how this started unpacking because this is what Yahweh was actually talking about. It says, Isaac called Jacob, including blessed him, gave him wisdom, gave him understanding, including charged him. And said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Yeah, right up front. Don't do this. Do not do this. Jacob's father gave him his wisdom and commanded him not to do that. And he wanted him to go somewhere, which we're going to see here. He's going to go somewhere we you see here. As we look at this, we want to understand what, what was going on. And we'll sit there, he told him, arise. Go to Pandan Aram, the house of Bethel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, <coughs> thy mother's brother. Tell him right up front. Now, we got to understand a couple of things on what he put in there. Because Pandan Aram is telling you, and it's broken up in two places. It's broken up in two places. Because Pandam is called the field. Aram is talking about between two rivers. So we look at that when you're saying Pandan Aram, you're looking at what he's telling you all together. The field between two rivers. He's telling us right up front. Right up front what it is. But we have to look at the parable. Because if we, we start looking at the just the name, we'll never know. But we know Pandan Aram is talking about the field between two rivers. Two sets of people. Interesting. Leah and Rachel. But that's beside the point. 
And he wanted him to go there, and he tell him right there. He tell him to go right there and do what he need to do. And watch what he says here. He said, "The all the God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful, including multiply thee and make it thou a multitude of people." So that's what he's telling him what he want to be. <clears throat> so now what's embedded in Jacob's head is some is what? What is what is embedded in his head? He's his father telling him. You're going to be fruitful and you're going to be multiplied and you're going to be a multitude of people. It's telling that right here. And God Almighty bless thee, make thee fruitful, multiply thee and make thee be a multitude of people. So that's what's embedded in Jacob's head. That's being highly fruitful. So that's what he's looking for. That's what he's looking for. So he's telling him to go to Bethel, the house of God. Telling him to go to Bethel, the house of God. That's interesting, isn't it? But Bethel, and we got to understand what all these mean. We're going to find out what that also means in a better way. But we got to remember they was Syrians. A Syrian. Syrian means meaning the the, the the language actually let's let's pull some let's pull some more of this let's get some more and then we're gonna get into it as he tells us it says including thou the blessings of Abraham because you're gonna get the blessings of Abraham the multitude of people in the blessings of Abraham and in in the seed and with thy seed that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger which God gave unto Abraham. And he tells him here. And Isaac sent away Jacob and went to pan down around. He went to the field between two rivers. That's what he's telling you. And he's telling him right there, including Laban, the son of Bethel, the Syrian. So we're looking at the Syrian. And now the Syrian, the reason why he's telling you the Syrian, because the Syrian is telling something specific. Syrian holds on to the language according to the unity of the Chaldeans. That's where he's coming from. <laughs> Chaldeans, where Abraham from. That's why he's saying this. So when he's sitting there saying the Syrian, he's telling him saying, these dudes are still holding on to the Chaldean lifestyle. <laughs> they hold on to the same thing. They worship everything under the sun. They worship a rock. The Christians. Telling you, right up front, what they do. Actually, I tell you what. Better yet, let's let's look at something it's to show you that he's from there. I just want to show you that Abraham is from there, and we're gonna go to Judas chapter five. I want to take you to verse six and seven. Just just to make sure, just in case people. Oh no, they not. So we're gonna look at it. And this this servant gonna tell this captain about Abraham. Now. It's true. He said, this people are descendants of the Chaldeans. He's telling you right up front. These are who they are. Watch this. He goes on more. Including they sojourned therefore in Mesopotamia because they would not follow the gods of their fathers. That's why Abraham left. Because God told him, hey, get up out of there. <laughs> you got to get up. Actually, we're going to tell you what. Better yet, let's look at it. Just making sure we're all on the same page as we move forward. And you see this over here in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit of God said unto Abram, Get thee out of the country, including from thy kindred, including from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. These, these Chaldeans are tripping. <laughs> I got to get you up out of there, bro, because you're not holding on to what they're doing, and it's driving you crazy. So, so you need to get on. So Abraham was called out, same thing. Now, Isaac is telling him, go get you a wife from there. He ain't telling him to stay there. Go get you a wife from there. Don't stay there. Just go get a wife from there. But you go get this wife. I'm just telling you. The son, the son of Bethu, but 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 these, these are Syrians. You gotta remember these are Syrians. <laughs> they holding, they holding on to they holding on to these Chaldeans, and they holding on to their lifestyle. So you can see, 
he putting a challenge up on on his own son. Now we we know with uh, Esau, <laughs> who's not the white man that people like to you got crazy people like to blame it on them or and not looking at their stupidity. But you got Esau, he was upset about that. Cause he felt that he, that Jacob got the blessing and so he was upset. So he went to Ishmael. <laughs> he went to he went to he went to uh, to Isaac's half brother and the son of um Hagar went to Ishmael. And he took two wives there. And he knew it wasn't going to please his father. But the merchant man, the merchant man, Jacob, went seeking these goodly pearls, these precious jewels, and he found it for a great price. So this is why I say you got to keep all this in mind. What's going on here? These precious jewels. And he found one, and we, we got to look at those, and we're going to start looking into it. Because I want you to remember that we got to see Leah. Leah, Leah, Leah actually means a cow. I want you to understand what that means up front. Leah means cow. But then he wanted Rachel. See, he wanted Rachel. Rachel is a sheep. A sheep just follows. Yeah, all this going to come in. All this going to come into play in a minute. All this going to come into play in one minute. So Rachel will just follow. But we're going to find out what was happening there to find out what's going on with this parable. So as that went on, we're going to look at this a little bit more. Let's go down a little bit more. Let's go down to Genesis and we're going to look at verse chapter 29, 29 and verse 25 to help us out a little bit more. We got to pull information from different places to put everything together. So in, in 29, verse 25, this is what we have to remember here. And it says, including it come to pass that in the morning, remember that it was, it was Leah. It was the cow. I'm only pausing for effect. That's it. No, no other reason. And, 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 and even still so to show you how we how we are <laughs> even to show you how we are people will sit there and think that he deceived him that's the crack up part the reason why it's so crack it up it wasn't pitch dark where he had to feel his way around it's, you can look at it and see, and see exactly who this woman was in fact this woman came out all her clothes because he went into her. So she took off all her clothes. So he knew who he was going into. <laughs> Let, let's go ahead for a minute. It says here, it says, including, he said to, to Laban, thou has, what has thou done unto me? Nothing. You, 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 you went in her. Why are you sitting there putting it on me? You said, give me my wife. I brought you Leah. You went in her. <laughs> Tell me, we can't make this stuff up. It's impossible to make this stuff up. Uh, what has that done to me? He said, did not I serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore, then thou hast beguiled me. Are you serious? If I was there, he probably looked at me. Michael, yeah. Is this dude serious? Man, it looked like he's serious. <laughs> it looked like he's serious. I know a plain day out when he when he when he when he when, he, when, he, when you took her. Plain is plain is you can see her. What, did he, did he, Michael, did he look drunk? No, he didn't look drunk. No, he wasn't tipsy. We can't make this stuff up. So he goes on more because we can't make it up. We just can't make it up. In verse 26, and, and Laban even says this. 
But he said, well, let's let's go with this. Laban said it must, it commanded not to be done in our country. To give the younger before the firstborn. Flipped him that quick. Flipped a lot of us that quick. He flipped a lot of us the same the same speed. Let's look at the parable. Because before going ahead in this parable, Laban wanted to see <laughs> what his wages was. He told him this up front. What are your wages to serve him? We're gonna we're gonna pick up the parable. We're gonna pick up the parable from there. Because that that was that was his fault. 100% his fault. And and he he bought the field. He bought the field. But let's 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 look at this. Let me go through it. Let's go back and look at this. In Genesis chapter uh, 29. Actually same same area, but we want to go back. I want to keep that there. In 29, but we're going to go down to verse 15. So we don't want to we want all these things to be on the same page to where we can look at them and join them side by side. Now, Laban, Jacob's mother's brother, he asked him, plain as day. Laban said unto Jacob, he says, because thou art my brother, once men become grown, the child become grown, and it can be your uncles or whatever, in the biblical times back then, you were seen as a brother. They wouldn't look at him as a nephew and stuff like that. So that's why he said, thou art my brother. He said, should thou... Therefore, serve me for not saying you're going to do it for free. No. Tell me what shall thy wages be? So he said, what, what, what's the price? What do you want? you going to serve me? What do you want? I want you to keep that in mind. You got to remember Jacob's a merchant man, but we also got to remember don't never forget what his daddy told him. Don't never forget what his daddy told him. And we're going to see some of that. Because you're going to see <laughs> the prices on what Laban had. Verse 16, including Laban had two daughters. One, the way of the elder was Leah. The way of the younger was Rachel. He had one the way of the cow, the other one was the way of the sheep, just the following. Right up here, right up front. We got to remember what Jacob was seeking. Jacob was seeking goodly pearls. Goodly pearls. So if he's seeking goodly pearls, he's not seeking financial gain. We got to remember what his dad said. We'll see right here. His dad said this, and we'll see it right there in Genesis chapter 28, verse 3. God Almighty will bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. But they ain't talking about money. People. So he's not talking about financial gain. He's talking about being a multitude of people. So that's what Jacob was looking at, because Laban, and that's why you see right here, it pointed out Laban had two daughters. You see now what the wages are. He He's looking at a multitude of people, and he's sitting there like, hmm, <laughs> okay, Laban, that's cool. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, them, them prices, that price I'm going to drop on you is your, your daughters. Hey, bro, my dad told me something, and your daughters can help me get there. Your daughters can help me do what I need to do. So one way was the cow, the other one way was the sheep. But we got to remember, the sheep, the follower, was following the ways of the Chaldeans, the Syrians. The language according to the Chaldeans. That was the sheep. <laughs> that's, that's racial. See, people don't like to look at that, but they that, that's who it was. And Jacob loved him some Rachel. However, 
We got to go here. And we got to look at this part. Verse 17. Leah was tender eyed. She was tender eyed. Meaning she was not just one of persuasion, but she was had this loving and affection. And eyed is talking about a spiritual understanding. So Rach, Leah didn't follow the way of the Chaldeans. <laughs> she wouldn't follow it because she was a cow. That's going to come into play in a second. However, we got to remember what was going on with Rachel. But Rachel was beautiful and well favored. Beautiful is the desired. She was the desirable one. And well, in favor, she was the accepted one. That's all I'm saying. So she was the desirable one, including the accepted one. Why? She's a she. Party over here, party over here. Yeah, that's her. That's her. Following the ways of her father, the Chaldeans, the Syrian, the language according to to the unity of the Chaldeans. She was part of the world. <laughs> she was part of the world. And I guess that Jacob, Jacob said, now he, oh man, oh man, this, this is cool. I like this. I like this. And this, this is all right in my book. But we have to remember even what Christ said. Even what he said. We'll find this even here, even coming out of his mouth in John chapter 15, verse 19. Providing ye were of the world, the world will love his own. That's why she was the desirable one and the well accepted one. That was her. She was the desired. And that's the one they, she was to go to. Hey, where the party at? Where the party at, Sister Rachel? Where, where, where? Oh, such and such is going to have one this weekend. We got one going to go. We got an after party. Over. Well, that's her. That's her. We got to keep the functions in place. But he's telling you, because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world for that reason. The world hates you because you're not doing the things of the world. You're not doing those things, and it goes down even with Jacob because Jacob, you know, he 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 didn't he didn't he didn't got amnesia. Because you'll see even here in Genesis chapter 25, just to look at something, chapter 25, verse 27, just get some history on Jacob, and it's telling you what's going on. It was more so. That it will go with Esau. It says the boys grew up and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. See, that that was Esau. But you see here, including Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. But sometimes people, oh, I'm going to go dabble. I see something going on in the world. Oh, yeah. What's going on? That's what happened. This, these things happen to a lot of us. We get caught up in not really understanding how it actually plays out. In First John chapter chapter three, he makes this even more clear. It says, "More or not, my brother, providing the world hates you, don't trip on that. Why? Because Leah was well hated. She was well hated, all because she's not following suit." She's not a sheep. Let's pull this a little bit closer. Pull this a little bit closer where the goats can get it. <coughs> and Jacob promised Rachel. <laughs> That's what it's actually telling you. Jacob promised Rachel. How did, why, why do it say, and he promised her? It, says, it don't say Jacob loved as we say love. It says, and said, no, he, Jacob promised Rachel and said, are y'all with me? This is, this is why I say it, it's comical. It's comical because we're not understanding scripture. You can even say, and Jacob loved Rachel 
full of thought. But if he loved Rachel, why will it say and said? No. He promised Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel. That younger daughter. I, I want I want to party with her. She she know where all the parties at. Yeah, that's the one I want to roll with. So he he wanted that one. He promised Rachel. He wanted the you. He wanted the sheep. And he told Laban that he will serve him for seven years for that one. Told Laban that right up front. He promised Rachel. And he told he told her that. Hey. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to serve you seven years for this. And that's putting in a lot. That is a great wage. That's a great wage for her. Laban, Laban, Laban responded to that, though. <laughs> he responded to it. Not cool, but he telling you, he's telling you right up front. And you can see Rachel ain't really the value of one. She ain't even a valued one. She's the party girl. Watch what it says. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to thee. I, I really get, I, I want to give her to you. Then give her to another man. Abide with me. Go on and hang with me, bro. <laughs> Just hang with me. I'll give you her. The one you should have is, is the other one. You going to catch hell with this one. This one got a lot of me in it. This one has all me in it. So Laban told him, he said, you know, you want this one? You, you want a wife? You want a bearer of fruit? Because he's telling you right up front, what do you want? You're, okay. You want a bearer of fruit? You're, okay. You need the other one. This one here is a party one. But I give her to you. I don't have a problem giving you this one here. She's the younger one. I give it to you. But it gets better. It, it gets better. Watch as it gets better as we go down. So, so we see what happened, including Jacob saved seven years for Rachel. And that's a full thought. So he served the seven years for Rachel. And it seemed unto him, it seemed unto him but a few days. For the love he had for her. He's cool about it. He's cool about it. Watch what happens. And Jacob said unto Laban, give me my fruit bearer. <laughs> give me my wife, bro. For my days are fulfilled that I may go into her. I, I need to, hey, my daddy told me something and I'm going I'm to do it. I'm going I'm to I'm put all my, I'm going to put all my, 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 my fruits in there. I'm going to put all my fruits in that one. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. <laughs> Let, let's move down. Let's move on down. And, and we see right here where we get to this. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and, and made a feast. So he got all the people together. He, he made a feast for him. And you see, it take and you see what he did. Including it came to pass in the evening, he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her unto him. What, what part are we missing here? This to crack up. It don't say Laban took Leah, his daughter, to her, and he could not see to where he would not be able to see who she is. It don't say he took Leah, his daughter, to him, and, and, and um, Jacob was drunken. It don't say none of that. It says... And it came to pass in the evening, he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her unto him. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can't make this stuff up. You can't make this up. So I guess he thought he was getting this as a, as a, as a signing bonus. It's probably what he thought. I don't know. But he said, and he brought her unto him. 
and Jacob, and he and Jacob went into it. He, oh man, boom, went right into it. So he brought Leah, and Leah, when you want to understand the full understanding of Leah, it's actually talking about the cow, but it's also talking about fruitful. So you're talking about the fruitful cow. That's the full understanding of Leah. The fruitful cow. That's what that actually means. So that's what happened here. He took the fruitful cow, his daughter, and brought her unto him, and he went into her. That's what happened. Now we see more so with Laban. Let's look at a little bit more with Laban. And we see in verse 24, and Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zephra, his maid in a, in, for a handmaid. Zephra mean drops. That's what she mean, drops. All this going to make sense in a minute. It might be funny, but it's all going to make sense. I promise you. All going to make sense in one minute. Because we just putting all this over here. We're going to see why this merchant man had to get all these, say, seeking goodly pearls. We're going to see why these, he, he, he had to do this multitude thing. We're going to find out what happened. So what happened here in verse 25, including it came to pass in the morning, remember, remember, for us to remember, <laughs> I don't know what he's thinking about. Remember, it was Leah. He brought Leah. So he letting us know. This is for us. Today. It was Leah. Who else you think it was? What, was Laban the magic man? No. <laughs> he going to make an apple cadaver? Let me switch him out? No. It's right there. Remember, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what has that done unto me? I didn't do anything. I brought Leah here and you went into her. Is that you not pleased? You not pleased with Leah? <laughs> you went into her. Okay, let me let me leave Jacob alone. I'm going to leave him alone. And, and it, so he, he said, what has that done? I served thee for Rachel. Okay, why are you going Leah? Right, let me leave him alone. It says, wherefore, then thou hast beguiled me. Are you serious? Wait a minute, dude. I beguiled you? I bet you Laban sitting there like, are you serious? Beguiled, talking about he deceived and betrayed him. That's what he's saying. He said, you, you, you done deceived me and you betrayed me. Dude, didn't you see this was Leah? Come on, Jacob. I know you ain't that blind. <laughs> let's look at something. I'm trying not to laugh, but let's look at something. He actually gets funny, but, but let's look at something just to help us out. In uh, Genesis chapter 25, when you look at verse 23, the Spirit of God said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Remember, 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 remember that? We were talking about that earlier. It was two nations in thy womb. And two manner of people. Same with Leah, same with Rachel. Two manner of people. You got two different people. Same with Esau and same with Jacob. Two manner of people. Same with Cain, same with Abel. Two different, two manner of people. Same thing. And he said, two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Including one people shall be stronger than the other people. The elder shall serve the younger. That's the one got that's the one got to teach the other. Okay, I'm trying not to laugh. So we just want to understand what's going on. Meaning that they will be separated, but the elder will serve the younger. Meaning it's going to minister to them. Not to be ministered to. Exactly what people come over here. They'll come over here and then sit in jail for two, three years, and then they learn the Bible and sit there and read it. Then they come out and now they want to teach. When they should have been practicing on not dropping the soap. I don't get it. But this is this is what they do. When we came, the elder is going to serve, going to minister to the younger. Not to be ministered to. Understand what the, the, the position of Leah. 
She is not to be ministered to, but to minister. She's a cow. <laughs> She's not a sheep. But then we'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. And, and Laban said this, and he made something clear. He made something clear because we got to figure out what's going on. Because giving the younger is not done in this country. It's not done in this country. Not done in this field. Not done within these borders. Not done here. Not 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 giving you something that's not born from Christ. It's not, it's not done that. He actually going to tell you this right here. <clears throat> Laban said, it is not done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. You can't do it. She's a party animal. So why am I going to give you the party animal? Dude, I'm trying to help you out, bro. I'm trying to help you out. So the same thing is, is what we look at. <laughs> it's the same thing we, we got to look at. We got to pay attention to it. And, and as you're looking at this, and he wanted Jacob to fulfill some more time. And he tell him, because he already said, he, dude, I'll give you her. I'll give you her. But since you served seven years, you do, you do seven more. Do seven more, dude. So he tell him, he said, fulfill her week, including we <clears throat> will give thee also for the service which thou should serve with me yet seven other years. Dude, I, I give it to you. You can have her. <clears throat> now, mind you, if Jacob would have married her first, Leah, Leah would have, would have still been there. He wouldn't have went after Leah. Are you, are you following this? He wouldn't have went after Leah <clears throat> if he would have grabbed Rachel first. Leah wouldn't have never been grabbed. Are y'all with me? Are we missing something? Are we missing something? Many people don't know. We Many people are still not understanding what I'm saying. If he would have grabbed Leah after Rachel, he would have married Rachel. I promise you, he wouldn't have grabbed Leah. There's no reason, because he loved Leah. I mean, he loved Rachel, I'm sorry. He loved Rachel, not Leah. That's the point. Let's, let's, let's look at something. <laughs> let's, let's look at something. Okay. So Rachel is going to be a bearer of fruit. <laughs> You're going to see what goes on here. So we're looking at that. And Rachel is a sheep. She's a follower. She's a follower. And, and, and now with, with, with her, we're going to see what happened. We're going to see what happened here. It says, and Jacob did so, and he fulfilled her week, and he gave gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife, to be a fruit bearer. You, you see what he's doing. You see what he's doing. But watch, but watch, but catch this. This is where we're going to come into some problems. Watch all the crazy problems we're going to have. <laughs> he, want, he want it. And I'm talking about Laban going to clean house. Crazy. Watch what happened. And he's, and he's saying it right here. Laban gave Rachel his daughter Bela, Bel Bel Belha, his handmaid to be her handmaid. Why? She's a party animal. <laughs> okay, I gotta stop that. Belha, her her name actually means carefree. Carefree, Ca carefree. Okay, we're we going to deal with her in a minute because I'm going to tell you, carefree ain't no joke, but we're going to find that out. Carefree. Just keep that in mind, carefree. <laughs> You'll see why in a minute. Okay, it says, and he went into her also and, and into Rachel and, and, he, and he promised Rachel also more than, than Leah. Yeah, because that was it. That, that, that's his girl. And he served yet another seven years. So even after he finished serving for, for uh, Rachel, he still served another seven. But it gets interesting. It gets interesting here now. And we want to understand some things. Now, you'll see what happened. 
when the spirit of God saw that Leah was hated. Now, mind you, he served seven years. So he was going in Leah probably all the time. And she wasn't getting pregnant. Cause he's trying to show this man, he's trying to show him something. But then when he went in, when he received Rachel, he had to show this man something. The same thing what he did with Abraham. He had to, <laughs> he had to do the same identical thing. Abraham now sitting there saying the same stupid stuff. Hey, I don't have no seed. Okay. Okay. You gonna have a seed from Sarah. So my seed gonna come through Sarah. What did Abraham do? Okay. Probably kept complaining. We don't know because the scriptures don't say it. But guess what? Whatever happened transpired between Abram and Sarah. Sarah brought Hagar and Abraham went into her and they had a child. Why? Did not the spirit of God tell this man that you're going to have one from your wife? Telling you can't make this stuff up. It's impossible to make it up. Yeah. The Spirit of God saw that Leah was hated. Seven years. This dude going in there all the time. Going in there, going in there. And he opened up her womb. But Rachel was barren. She's a party girl. Anybody getting this? Hopefully, hopefully you guys getting this. Cause something went wrong. Okay. <laughs> you want to... Let me show you something. I'm going to show you something that we do. <laughs> I'm going to show you something we do. I'm going to show you something when he brings stuff to us. And I'm going to show you how crazy we are. I'm just going to show you how crazy we are. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 22. I'm going to show you just how crazy we are. And, and y'all just let me know. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you this. Now watch this. Now this is with, this is with Adam. This is with the man and the woman. <laughs> Watch what happened here. Now, I'm going to start at verse 21, but I'm, we're going to go down to verse 22. It's the one I'm actually going to be focused in on. Including the spirit of God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam. That means the man and the woman. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs. So he took one of his spirits and closed up his flesh in replacement thereof, including the real which the spirit of God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So we can't call them boo-boo. <laughs> we do the same thing they doing. He going to bring it there. And what happened? What went wrong? You see, you see all the lies. You, you see the lie right here. Yeah, I read it if you want me to read it. I'm gonna read it just to show you the lie that we're gonna do right up front. I'm gonna show you the lie. Let me just show you the lie, and then I'm gonna show you why. It says, and Adam said, This is now oh dang, Lord, thank you, Lord. This is now a bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and she should be called woman because she was taken, she was taken out of man. And therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they should be one flesh. And they was both in sin and the man and his wife and it was not a shame. Ain't that a trip? <laughs> I'm telling you, we can't make this up. Why? I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why I just went here just to where we can get it. Now, he was given Leah. He was given Leah. But watch what we do. As soon as Adam did something wrong, I'm going to show you what we did. This is right here. And... He told him the first we want to focus on is verse 11, but we want to make sure we're going to get 12. It says, and he said, who told thee that I was naked? Who told you was a sin? Have y'all, have y'all, y'all learned the tree? I commanded thee that I should not eat it. Eat. Watch what we say. Put your name there. I'm going to show you what we say. And the man said, the woman whom thou givest to be with me, she gave me a tree and I did eat. You, you see this bold faced lie? A bold-faced lie. We telling a bold-faced, unadulterated lie. Now we saying he gave this and <laughs> he's sitting there saying God gave us your God, you gave us, you gave us that spirit, and so she gave it to us. I'm telling you, 
It's impossible to make this up. We putting the blame on God. Actually, I want to show you something. He's just running me somewhere else. Uh, I got to stop doing it, but he's running me somewhere. I just want to show it to you just so you can see it. I know it's in Matthew chapter 7. I know it's verse 11 or 12. It's verse 11. It's right here. I'm telling you right in front. It says, providing ye then, being evil, how know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more your father, your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him. He wanted to be a multitude of people and he gave him the cow. <laughs> oh boy. I don't know. I don't know. We, 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, we, we can't make this up. So, if he give you the, the woman, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God being evil, that, that's, literally what, that's literally what Adam said. Out of his own mouth. He giving him the Spirit of God. He giving him the Holy Ghost. And Adam is saying, it's the woman you gave me. And I ate it. Moses, I'm going to destroy these people and I'll make you a new nation. You better be glad he didn't say, Michael, I'm going to destroy this nation and I'll make you a, I'm going I'm to make you a great nation. And what time are you going to do it? You, what time you want to do that? Just let me know when you're going to do it. Do I need to go hide behind that rock <laughs> before you do it? Because we can't make this stuff up. It's impossible to make this stuff up. And you see right here, he bring his own spirit to him, and we put the we go do shadiness because we'll be guys knowing good and we'll be just like him, and we ate it. <laughs> and it got so it got so bad here. It's so crazy here, because as I told you, with 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 uh, with uh, with Rachel, see Rachel' womb was closed up, but Rachel was rolling with carefree. Don't don't forget who she is. Carefree. Don't see people. Well, that's Bela. No, get off of that. Her name is Carefree. Now she ended up producing Neftali and Dan. <laughs> I'm telling you, she's carefree. Hey, 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 I want you, to, I want my husband going, hey, okay, girl. All right, girl. All right, girl. I, I, I got you. I got you. I got you, girl. Yeah, carefree. She, she's into that. I'll tell you what else she into. We're going we're gonna to see it right here. Oh, carefree. Oh, carefree. Hi, girl, carefree. Let's look at this. In Genesis chapter 35, verse 22, it says, And it came to pass when Israel, Jacob, dwelled in the land that Reuben went and lay with carefree. <laughs> That's what you, he go lay with carefree. His father's concubine. The mother of Naphtali and, and Dan. Carefree said, Reuben, you like this? Come on here, come here, brother. Come on, come on in here. Come on here, come in here, boy. Come on, come on, boy. I got something for you, boy. <laughs> he went right into carefree. That's why when you see on on the parable, them two together is Rachel <laughs> and carefree. That's them. People sitting there, I wonder why Elder Johnson got three women be on the front of you. I wonder why them three women sitting on there on, on, the, on the thing. Now you know why. You got, you got a sheep and you got anything goes. 
Reuben, all right, Reuben, you looking at me too long, Reuben. Come, come in here, Reuben. I got something for you, Reuben. And Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were 12. I'm telling you, you can't make this up. It's impossible to make this stuff up. It's impossible. Let's let's look at something. Let's look at something else. We we got to go through this and push through it. Besides sitting there talking about our forefathers, getting all getting all the juicy gossip on our forefathers. Let's let's let's, let's try to push through this. In in First Corinthians chapter seven, and we're going to look at verse two. We're going to look at verse two. And you can see it's telling us right up front. It says, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, to avoid fornication, let every man, man or woman, M-A-N, man or woman, have his own wife. So you're going to have your own, your own fruit bearer. <laughs> you have your own fruit bearer. You're telling me, including every woman, her own husband. Right up front here. So we got to flee fornication. And fornication is talking about unfaithfulness and lasciviousness. That's what that's talking about. So every man, male or female, need to have their own husband, their own head. And and you cannot, it's impossible, it's impossible for us to where we can try to serve too. It's crazy. But it's telling us this right here in verse um in verse three. It says, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. I mean, goodwill and pledge. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Being that master builder, not building one on, on something of, of, of flesh, but building something on faith. Not behind making deals this for that. outside the marriage, but inspecting what we need to be doing, inspecting what the outcome is. See, we got to remember what, 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 what was be still being told, the expected outcome on what the fruitfulness was based on what Jacob was told. And you got to go back here in Genesis chapter 28 and in verse three, it says, and God almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee and thou may, and thou uh, mayest be a multitude of people. That was Jacob outcome. Next thing you know, carefree, <laughs> carefree them over there having a party. Hey, hey, Bela, yeah. Uh, I need Jacob to go. I need you to have a baby. Girl, you will you have a baby for me? Uh, yeah, you know, girl, Jacob be looking kind of nice. <laughs> he be looking nice. You and yeah, you you send him my way. I got something for him. And just right up a rally carefree so what goes on is this we got to look at something that, that happened and we're going to see here we're going to see it here in Genesis chapter chapter 30 we'll pick it up at verse 14 right here Reuben went out and this is uh, Genesis chapter 30 and we want to focus on 14 where well, Reuben went out in the days of wheat harvest but we want to understand what that actually means we want to understand what that means to understand the, the, the scriptures so the wheat harvest is actually talking about the ingathering of fruits that's what that means and, and he found mandrakes in the field mandrakes is talking about fruits of love that's what he found. So we got to keep all this in mind with the what everything is. You're going to see people, how people switch because they don't care what it is. Mandrakes is fruits of love, but you, you got to understand how the parable is running. That's a physical similitude for us to understand what it means spiritually. Watch what happens. <clears throat> so he found these fruits of love in the field and brought them unto his mother, Leah, the cow. Then he <laughs> go to sheep. She shows up. She said to Leah, give me, I pray thee, of thy sons, fruits of love. You got to give that, girl, you need to give that up. I want them. 
the fruits of love, showing you who what she's really all about. So what happened is this here, it, it goes down. As it goes into it, it says, and she said, Rape, not Leah. So Leah said unto her, it's a small matter. It's really a small matter. It's really a really small matter. Me, me, really don't mean anything. But it's a small matter that thou has taken my husband. You see, she ain't saying our husband. You have taken our husband to yourself. You see, it said you taken my husband. She understands you only get one wife. So she's letting her know you taking my husband. It's a small thing. It's a small, small, small thing. And it goes on more. It said, you're taking my husband, including thou would also take my son's mandrakes also. You also going to take my son's mandrake? Are you serious? You going to take my, man, my, my, my son's fruits of love? You going to take those? So, so Rachel said, for that reason, he shall lie with thee tonight. For your son, Fruits of love. He give me those. I give you your fruits of love. You see, you see how this is actually going. So now she's willing and dealing. Why? Well, that's 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 Rachel. But let's move down a little bit more. And she and she actually and Leah actually lets him know right up front. Including Jacob came out of the field. So he come out that field. He come out the land. And, and in the evening, Leah went out to meet him. And she said, thou come in unto me. You, you, you can come on over here. But surely I have hired thee. I hired you with my son's fruits of love. All spiritual, with my son's fruits of love, and he laid with her that night. That night, he laid with her. And as soon as he laid with her, she 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 conceived. But you gotta remember how this actually goes. See, when she went out and met Jacob, she didn't talk about those fruits of love, and she lay with him that night, she conceived, which it shows you right here, and then we're going to look at something else. Let me show you something else. And it says, including God hearken unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob the fifth son. So now she she buried another son. <laughs> They trying to show Jacob what's going on and he still ain't getting it. So with this, you'll see where she ended up having, actually she ended up having two more. You'll see right here. Well, let's go down to it. See this. So Leah said, God had given me my hire. Exactly the point. Because I, I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. Issachar don't look like a Mexican, don't smell like a Mexican. It's not a Mexican. That's that's a straight Israelite. But people will sit there and give you the falsities and tell you the other stuff. But it's telling you exactly what he was. He's going to look just like all the rest of them. And then he goes better. It gets better. And Leah conceived again and bare Jacob the sixth son. 
You see how this working out? This one is Zubla. But you just said, let me, let me, let me. Let's go down here. We'll see. Let's grab this all the way down. Leah said, God have endowed me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me because I have bored him six sons and called his name Zublin. The burning desires of burning and dwell in her habitation. This is what he's actually getting into. Now to prove what it went on, to prove what went on, to show you a little bit more, let me show you something. Just do this. This kind of hour of what are we doing, but I want to show you something. It says, including afterwards, she bare a daughter and called her name Dinah. You bear children and then you give in a spirit. A child is born, a servant is given. Tells you that. See it even here. And now we want to look at what was going on. We want to look at also what was going on. Because after he, he's putting this parable together for you. So we got to look how this actually works out. When we get to verse 22, he tells you something that's really important. God remember Rachel. Because Rachel started understanding so God remember Rachel, including God hearken to her and open her womb. She started seeing what the truth is because she thinks she was found, but God has found her and he hearkened unto her and to give her fruits. We'll see that. See, because when you look at this all together, actually I can pull this down. You see here in Genesis chapter 30, verse 1, I want to show you this. Including when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Or else I die. Straight up front. Give me children or, or I'm getting ready to, to, to die. So we look at that and, and understand what's going on here. Now we go back over and now we want to drop down to verse 23. As I said, and she conceived and bare a son and said, God have taken away my reapproach. He's taken away my reapproach. He has taken away her disgrace, her shame, her taunt, her rebukes that she had towards her sister. He's taken that away. That's what she's telling him. See, God has taken these things away, my reapproach. Interesting. Right here. All these things she had said about her sister and did to her sister, God has taken those things away. And the, the weirdest thing you'll see here is, is buried right here. Is buried right here. And called his way Joseph. This is another problem, folks, we find out. Called his way Joseph because Joseph actually, actually mean to show you again how foolish people is out there and showing you how much people say they know Paleo Hebrew, show you how much they don't know it. To show you how much people say they know Hebrew, to show you how much they don't know it. To show you how much people say they know Greek, how much they don't know it. Because Joseph actually means Israel. The reason why it actually means Jehovah's servant, the son of prophecy. That's why you always had those dreams that I told you on the last go round. That's why Joseph is the son of prophecy. 
He's Jehovah's servant. His name is actually Israel. That was the purpose of that. That was the purpose of the, of the parable. But it gets even more deeper into it. Because he had to go and prepare a place for the children of Israel, the place of prophecy. Actually, let's, let's look at some of this. Let's look at some of this. In Genesis chapter 45. Genesis uh, 45, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. And you see, Joseph actually speaks, talks about this. He says, now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. God was already doing that. God already really had that in the works because he already had the kingdom already ready. He already had the kingdom prepared. So when you come there, it was already prepared for you. Actually, better yet, let's, let's look at that. Let's look at that also to make sure we're all on the same page. So when we go over here to second address and we're going to look at second address chapter two and picking it up at verse 13 to understand a little bit more. Go, including ye shall receive, pray for a few days that unto you that they may be shortened. The kingdom of the kingdom is already prepared for you. Because he has to go ahead. He has to go ahead. That's the purpose on what's going on. But it gets better on what's, what's happening here. Because I'm going to ask you a question to where we're going to find out. Also what the Bible says that we're going to do in the back. But I'm going to ask the question in, in a minute. But that's the journey we are on. In the journey we are on, we're going to find that out. We got to go back to Genesis to find out how this one plays. We got to go back to Genesis to see how it plays in Matthew. We're going to go to Genesis 35. We're going to pick it up at verse 16. See how this plays out. As we're going to pick up this part. Because once her journey started, it says they journey from Bethel. See, Bethel is actually called the house of God, but the real name of it is actually called Luz. Actually, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show you everything we're doing. It's actually called lust. In 28, and we'll find this in verse 19. 18, 19. 19. This tells us right there. It says, he called the name of the place Bethel, but the name of the city was called Luz at the first. That's the, what it was called. That's what it was called. And he says more, but a little way come to Ephesus. And we got to understand what Ephesus is because Ephesus really is Bethlehem. You'll see it actually in verse 19. We'll see it right here. It says, and Rachel died and buried in the way of Ephesus, which is Bethlehem. See, just switch arounds. But most of us are not seeing what these are being, what's being done. So let's look at this. And she had, a, she had, she travailed. She had hard labor. She had a hard labor to, to produce what she had to produce. It cost her her life, which is going to cost many of us our lives. And it come to pass when she had hard labor and that the midwife said unto her, fear not, thou should have this son also. And that was talking about Benjamin. But we're going to see what's going on here. It says, it came to pass as her soul was departing, was in departing, she said, and before she, for she died, that she called his name Beoni. But the father called his name Benjamin. Called his name Benjamin. These things is happening to where we can understand what, what's going on. And Rachel died. 
and was buried in the in Ephesus, which is Bethlehem. So these things happen, and we got to understand what, what was going on. It says, and Jacob set a pillar upon her grave, and that is the pillar of Rachel's grave until this day, the sheep going into Bethlehem. It's telling us right up front what is happening. Many of us is not going to find our way home. Here is your key. Including Israel journeyed and spread his tent beyond the tower of Edar. They're telling you a whole lot with that last pack. And the question that I have before we wrap this up and we're going to go in the back area and we're going to do a short study and also go over the question that I asked last week. But I do want to understand one thing. And this is the question to each and every one of you. And, and we're going to be right in the back. You're more than welcome to come to the back. What is the purpose of the double portion? What's the purpose of that? What's the purpose of it? What, what will you benefit from having a double portion? We want to know what that is. And, and the same thing is, I'm going to answer the questions on a lot of things in the back, especially on the, the teaching that we did last week, especially on what we asked the question in the back. We will literally go through what it was and why is it. So if you look down in the description below, you'll see where you can click and come into the Zoom area and you can join us. You're more than welcome to join us for this Bible study. It shouldn't take no more than probably an hour. But I do want to make sure the people who have taken the time and put in, we want to find out the people who's going to be part of that Bible study class. Because the Bible study class is actually is going to allow you to show you how we can look at these parables. Because we got another part of this parable. So you will see a part three. And it's going to clearly clear up everything for these two sisters to where we understand what it's being talking about but the main thing is is we want to understand what it is so when you come in the back you can you can do it and see we got people doing it already on the front which that again shows you how much people do not follow instructions because I said the clearest day we're going to answer that in the back area however they choosing to put it on the front I don't get it but that just shows you how Israel people are. They'll just do things and just put them up there. So what we're going to do, we're going to end it here. And we're going to go into the back area. And, and the same thing is I want to thank um, Brother Harvey. To where he's over here. To where I'll be speaking to him. You know, here and there. To where we can make sure he can find out exactly who... God is, who he is and what he is and what it's about. So with that, I say to each and every person, until next time, please understand the parable, go back and meditate on it, go back and look at it again and make sure you get it, understand it, what was happening. So I say to each and every person, until then, and the same thing, actually the same thing with the people um, who's trying to come into the, um, the SharePoint area, we have that going, and so you just take the time. Them sisters, they're working on it. They're making sure you can get this to make sure you can understand it and to where you can get back there. And uh, uh, Deacon Micah, even though he, he didn't have to, but he he, re he revamped a lot of stuff back there. I guess he's letting me know in a nice way. You know, the Johnson, the way he did it was nice, but let me go ahead and show you how to hook it up. And he went on and took care of that. So I appreciate that. But for each and every other person, Look down in the description. You're more than welcome to join us. And I'll see you in a little bit. And we have a lot of other people. Who, if you're brand new, you come back there, please make sure your camera is on. We have some people who came back there, sent me emails talking about they don't know why they was kicked out. I don't know who you are. If I don't know who you are and you come back there with your camera off, 
you will be removed once we ask you to turn your camera on and you refuse. So again, we're not Christians here. We follow the Christ. So keep that in mind. So with that, I say to each and every person, until next time. Shalom. Thank you.